know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what's up? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. You know why, Harry? Because this is a special show. Um, we actually wow. have a special guest this time. Now, I know, I know I've said that 400 times before, <laughs> but this, <laughs> this time, this time I mean it, God damn it. Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Uh, absolutely, man. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, finally, hopefully the last show in my dad's garage where I've been broadcasting <laughs> out of the flooded, the now flooded garage. <laughs> this is how Mark Maron started, right? Same yeah, deal? Yeah, I think. Joe Rogan, too. I think yeah. it was just how uh, it started, and then they made bigger things. Uh... Let me uh, introduce our guest, a uh, good friend of mine, dog, a really, really funny dude. Um, you see him all over. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, a club favorite. I hate when people say that. A uh, club favorite. Give it up for my boy Casey Aurora, yo. Give it up for Casey. Thank you, Casey. Thank Thank you for having me. Thank Thanks you. for coming uh, on. We've been trying to do this for for a little while now. Mm -hmm. And we're missing each other and stuff like that. But thanks for coming on, man. I, I appreciate you. Funny, right. funny dude. Um, one of the one of the best, uh, one of the few hosts that I would say that actually takes responsibility for the host job. Mm. On like he will he will shut the motherfucker. He will shut the show down. Look, motherfuckers, uh, you're not gonna talk to. You're not gonna talk to my friend set. That you, that's not happening. He was. He does not give a fuck about the awkward. We just oh. did. Yeah, we just did New York Comedy Club. He shut the whole shit down. He like fuck this. Yeah, this woman. I don't care and how big her breasts were. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he actually, Jake <laughs> Harry, he actually said that. I don't wow. care how big your tits wow. are. I don't that's care. I don't care. Wow. You, you, this is not about you, sweetie. Now most people care. Just so you know, <laughs> out of all the people caring, I am not one of them. Yeah, I, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't care how deep your cleavage is. Yeah. <laughs> I think he might have said that, too. Yeah, it was it was deep. It was deep. It was deep cleavage. Yeah. It was deep cleavage. But, but she was... had um. I saw her after the show. Yeah. And she had like a like she had like gimp legs. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Geez. She walked like uh like. Like retarded, as she walked retarded. Because it was the the titties was so heavy. It, it, <laughs> it, 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 she's like a ram, you know. When a ram, uh, when a ram breeds, they uh, all the uh, all the all the calcium goes from the bones in the body into the horns. So that's why she's got little little baby legs, little baby legs. So it's good, to, legs. good yeah. to see you, bro. Good to see you, man. How you been? Be here. I've been good, man. Just, uh, you know, getting uh, my shit off the ground. Uh, I'm seeing, you know, I watch what other people are doing. You know, I see that you've been doing your thing. I want to get my podcast started. So I started doing that. Yeah. You know, it's been uh, it's been fun, you know, just uh, speaking and going, speaking uh, as honestly as possible. Yeah, well, you um. You know, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't know if I ever said this, but if you ever need help, dog, you can always call me Appreciate anything. Yeah, any any. Yeah, I mean, we've been we are like the OGs of this shit. Mm -hmm. Did we? Hey, Harry, were we doing ours longer than Rogan or no? I think Rogan started before us slightly before us, but uh, I think we're approaching episode 500 soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy to think about the 500 times we've we've done this shit. 
Yeah, nine, nine, um, nine. Was it nine years now? Nine so, years. We're going. It's five hundred times we've gone on and talked about how uh, women ain't shit. Right? Is that how we used to start? <laughs> how we? Uh, can you believe we did that five hundred times? That's what some people times. think of the podcast. Hey, you know what? Nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> Not one thing. None of our philosophies. No, they're all the same. We haven't no. grown at all. Well, that, you know, that's a funny thing, Casey. I don't know if you know, but the show initially came from a show that I did with Patrice mm -hmm. on O&A. And, uh, and it, it's funny because, you know, the Internet lasts forever. Uh, <laughs> that's why you never do porn. Um, <laughs> but uh, you, one of the um, many reasons. There's other reasons you shouldn't do well, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the main one, though. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's weird because I still get guys who have listened to you know, listen to the original stuff that we did with Opie and Anthony. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, like it, it's weird because you get these 19 to 20, 25 year old dudes who just discovered it. And this is all new to them. And then, you know, so it, it's great because you you're you constantly always have an ever, ever ending, never ending influx of new people listening. Mm -hmm. But um, we did those episodes in 2006. Wow. And and I've grown. I've personally grown so much. I mean, Patrice stopped growing, uh, but yeah. I mean, yeah. but, you know, um, but I've grown, you know, mentally in terms of the philosophies and stuff that we talk about. Ben, it's more pre more precise um, and I'm still I'm still growing in, in itself. My own understanding of, you know, the social dynamics of, of relationships and love and monogamy and marriage and all of that stuff. And I'm still, but I'll get these guys who will, who will, who have, who know me from the black Phillip show. Mm -hmm. And then they're, they're kind of like, it's weird because they're quoting stuff that I said in 2006 mm. where I'm like, Whoa, Whoa, uh, uh, a I don't lot really, of things that are different yeah, in 2006. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like Dante uh, was like, we're gonna be in Afghanistan forever, bro. <laughs> you can quote me on that. <laughs> I was like, bell bottoms forever, dude. I don't give a fuck. Um, I'll never put laces in my shell top Adidas, never. So, um, but it's like, so they they I could usually tell that they've listened to the because it's very aggressive, mm -hmm. very angry, very aggressive. I mean, even when I do the one on one consultations or even dudes that list that are on the Patreon, don't forget, y'all sign up for the Patreon. Keep us, you know, support us so we can keep doing this um, at uh, Patreon.com dot uh, com slash man school 202. Um, but we um very aggressive. And and one the of the listeners things, are very aggressive. They, they're well, their when, they, when they come from the yeah. old school stuff, it's because it was very vitriol. That's it, what the show the, was. The yeah. show was very aggressive. Well, you always say that it was the anger portion, that yeah, there's yeah. something which is kind of necessary. But it you're saying it never progressed from there. It, yeah. it, it didn't stick around anyway long enough to. I think it would have eventually, maybe. Wait, mean that it would have? Yeah, oh, I, definitely I think, think it would Patrice, have. Yeah. Patrice was progress. You know, he was changing at a time. Yeah. But I mean, I was never angry because I because, I, you know, I was I never had a problem getting late. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I got I mean, I, I and I mean, I don't, I'm not bragging about it, but it was just I never uh, I just, you know, you know, it's just certain guys are just lucky. Mm -hmm. In that way, you know, they just kind of in intuitively like they do certain things that works and then they just keep doing those same things. Are they lucky or are they smart? Nah, I don't think so, dog. I mean, I don't think this is something that you. What are we referring to? <laughs> lucky in what sense? Are they like able to laid? get laid? Yeah. No, I, I don't mean. So, I mean, I think there were certain things that I did and I knew that I was doing Think certain things. How about the uh, circumstances no, I, that raised you? You're lucky to have the certain influences or whatever that led to that or the career path that that made it clear for you. That could be considered lucky to some extent. Well, I, I think I think, you know, when you talk, I think we all have a, a privilege like there's yeah. a privilege to whoever we are. Like I'll a say I'm privilege. lucky to have met you because I don't think I don't know that I would have figured it out to the level that I have without you. So yeah, I could sense, agree with that, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you would have been shit. I agree. Yeah. Harry would not have been shit. Right. <laughs> but I, I, there's a there's a few things. I, but I think that 
it, it was, you know, you know, like there's that guy in your high school or something that automatic just gets laid, like right. kind of automatically. It's sure. not that he's smart or anything. It's just that who his personality is kind of clicks the boxes that he doesn't even understand why it clicks the boxes. It just does. Right, right. I guess, you know what? Smart's not the right word. Maybe it's capable. There's a capability that exists. Well, yeah, I mean, well, when you say capable, it's almost like you're denoting that it's there's a an intention. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't I think don't, that there's I don't believe in I don't think it's luck that plays a part here. You know what I mean? I think that there's a certain level of manipulation that's involved to sleep with somebody to a degree. Uh, hmm. I, I, I don't. You know, I might have thought that years ago. I, mm. I don't I don't I don't think that now. You don't think that there's some sort of manipulation that goes into sleeping with somebody? No, not at all. I mean, not I mean, not, not for me. Mm. Um, I, I, I think that denotes that the that the woman doesn't want to have sex. Right, right, right. You know no, what I mean? mean? Yeah, of course. But like. When you see someone that you met, maybe I'm not using the right words, but it's just like you meet well, somebody. Explain, explain what you yeah, explain. We, we so elaborate. You meet somebody and, you know, they don't they may or may not consider having sex with you. And you may be more interested in having sex with them. And then maybe if you appeal to to a certain part of them that they find, well, now I look at this guy in a different light in a light that I'm more attracted to. Then that to me is like feels like some sort of manipulation in a way but not in a bad way you know what well, i mean yeah yeah i mean I, yeah. I think when you say manipulation people yeah. always take it as a negative connotation right but I, I i totally understand what you what you're right. saying it's, it's not like, like a negative i've never had to coerce anybody to sleep with me i'm, ever. I'm trying to think i had a uh, so i haven't told this story in a long time but mm -hmm. i don't rem i don't remember what episode it was harry but it was uh when we had a, I, I had one of my my ex-girlfriends on the show mm -hmm. and deidra aziza yeah. she's a, she was a I want to say it's 123, but let me look it up. I don't uh, remember because I think we she, used to break your balls relentlessly. Yeah, yeah, but. yeah. So it was really interesting for me, and this is this is something podcast wise to keep in to always keep into into consideration. I think when you do a podcast, people fuck with you because of your level of honesty, right? Um, and they also don't want things to be too produced. Yes. Uh, so there's a rawness and a a kind of natural rawness that that allows podcasting where radio is like okay well 525 and then we'll we're gonna go with a little bit little bit back we're gonna come back with stupid pet tricks you know what i mean mm -hmm. um the fact that you know it's got a guy like rogan has is has literally the biggest show anywhere is because there's a and and then think about that he's literally doing a two-hour talk format he's talking to somebody for two hours right so but i, I think there's a rawness and an honesty to that um mm. so I, I was teaching all this stuff and i was talking about this stuff i mean this harry this had to be what 120 was what how many that was I the mean, second year in or something like that third year at most third year, third at, year most. at most and i brought this girl on on the podcast that i was i was dating at one time and and I hadn't I hadn't spoke to her for a long time. And we kind she kind of like ran from me in a way. Like she kind of did that a lot anyway. But I brought her on the podcast because I wanted my fans to know that I wasn't that wasn't lying, that I was authentic in the fact that I had no idea what her impression was of me or what she was gonna say or what she wasn't gonna say. And, and you were uncomfortable. Oh, which is very yeah. weird to see you because you don't like praise. Yeah, yeah, even though you joke around about it, you were very <laughs> uncomfortable. Like it was the only time I watched you squirm a little bit. Yeah, she did. And they oh, yo, Casey, they loved watching me squirm. I mean, if you case you've known me for a good amount of time. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you've ever seen me squirm. No, <laughs> no I've never seen you squirm. You're always in the pocket. You're always, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're right where you need to be. You're not uncomfortable. Right. And uh, always the right temperature wherever you walk <laughs> in. Just, look, just right there. Bing, bing, just, bing. Yeah, yeah. You know, need a sweater? No, I'm good. Yeah. Um, Even if you walk in with a fur coat on an unreasonably <laughs> warm day, you're still comfortable. <laughs> That's how little I've seen you squirm, which yeah. is just say none. So it was an interesting thing because uh, I think, um, you know, podcasting in general is something that 
it really exposes yourself to people. So I think if you're fraudulent, it comes through. Right. It's uh, episode 128, by the way, uh, from 2014. This is how far back wow. it was. Wow, that's crazy. The Adra Aziza. Back yeah. over the Beige Phillips show. <laughs> So what, um, what's funny is um, so she came on and she talked about me and she talked about, you know, what it was like dating me and, and the difficulties of it and the insecurities. And, and, and she, I mean, it was a, it was let's say it was a definitely I definitely got a five star review overall, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that I was going to get a five star review, which was which was I think was interesting just to expose myself to that kind of scrutiny and then. And, and be OK with it. And I, and I think the, 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 the fans kind of respond to that as well. But um, one of the things that I think is, you know, when we're talking about uh, smartness or some what I've come, I've, I've there was thing there was situations where I would teach technique, different techniques, things to do, the things that work, which was like manipulative. And then uh, later on, I found out that I've, I, I use this term that real game is no game at all. Right. Um, right. So a lot of pickup artists. Uh, it's funny because I just got a. I I do consultations. I do one on one consultation. It was a kid who was had spent maybe eight and nine thousand dollars in in uh, pickup artists boot camps and stuff mm -hmm. like a boot camp at like three four grand for the weekend. And uh, there's no limit people will spend to pick up women. Oh yeah, yeah. And and it's then ridiculous. and this kid was fucked up because he had some really uh, extensive rejection, uh, like yeah. a girl actually struck him, you know, Jesus. He, you know, so, and I was like, well, what happened? Like, what did you say? Like, what? <laughs> but one of the things I think that happens is there's an inauthenticity. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so when you say like a manipulation, one of the things that I, I, I think is really interesting, it's funny because I, I want to get into that thing we were talking about, Harry, because we didn't really finish okay. talking about, but yeah, uh, and it'd be great because you'll give me a little insight on it too, Casey. But, mm -hmm. um, so there's an in, there's a inauthenticity, there, there's, a, there's a, there's a subtext, right, to everything that you do, mm -hmm. and we know that, um, because you're on stage all the time and you're being judged every moment. So even when I started off talking about how Casey will Casey don't mind uh, slam, you know, like telling you, I don't care how big, how, care how big your tits are. Stop talking in the room. Like there's a there's a certain confidence that you have to have to to be able to do that. But, uh, but there's also a, a, a specific creed that you're willing not to. Uh, you're not we are not willing to sell your soul's soul because she has big tits. You know what I mean? Or because right. you might be able to fuck her afterwards because of whatever. Um, right. That's also not knowing she's got little gimpy legs, but that's a whole, that's that's, thing. That's a whole other thing. Right. <laughs> I mean, would but, that have stopped you if you're a big fan of big tits? No, I what I meant was, so. oh, like, bitch, you, you got big tits, but you got gimpy legs. Let's, let's bring you down to like a four now. Come on, bitch. Right. I gotta, <laughs> if I got to carry you around. Like, come on, how, oh how dope are you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, I think that there's a, an obligation that you owe as the MC yeah. to do these types of things. And, but I do want to hear more about this, like a certain type of creed. To okay, a person so, to do so but that creed, mm -hmm. that creed is something that when you have that creed, like if you practice that same creed in when it comes. So a lot of times people will have that creed in one situation and then they'll falter when it comes to the other other situations like your your code, your code or your creed is something that should be thought about in a way that gives you reference to whenever you're confronted with a situation that you're not comfortable or haven't been in before, you should be able to refer back to that creed and come up with the answer of how you move forward. Right. So, so, um, you know, I've seen guys that take no shit about this and that, and then they get a girl and the girl, and then they're like, happy life, happy wife. And then, you know, and then yeah. just go ahead. Right. I never understood that mentality. The, um, you know, it was a constant, this was like the concept I've heard time and time again, is that, Oh, a woman will, deep you know like a guy will be like a, a you know a tiger or a fucking boss and then the woman is gonna declaw him she she took away all his bite and i mean i hear that a lot but it's okay. like maybe you didn't have that bite to begin with 
or I don't know if you don't have that bite. Right. But I will say there's a situation because of your particular insecurities. Right. You are not confident in that realm. And because you're not in and confident in that realm, you you succumb because of, you feel like you're weak there. Right. So I, um, I also think guys don't look at it as the same as they do with other aspects of their lives. Like, you know, that's something we've always talked about in that a guy will be really strong and tough in business or whatever. But then his woman is walking all over him because he doesn't have the same assert assertiveness and confidence that he does with a relationship because we think they're different in some capacity. Yeah, and you think each situation is different. And I think um, understanding that there's this universe, cosmic and universal laws, mm -hmm. you, you reapply them all over and over and over again. You have to reapply them. And, and, and there's no, because if they work, they'll work in every situation. Okay. Um, so I, I think, um, and I would I would say this, and I, I mean it was totally a compliment that I was giving you to shut it down. Mm -hmm. But I would say this. Now this is how I've evolved in 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 my own kind of uh, being more precise and more direct. Sure. I would have never said anything about her tits. Right. Absolutely. Not, not and not because I'm I'm worried about saying something about her tits. No. But. It's a tell. Yes, it was. Okay, good, good, good. Right, go 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 and it was like, it was a tell about me. Yes. And what I was focusing on. Yes. When that was nobody else's. Right, 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 so right, right. All right. I had to just say was, shut up. Right, nobody right. needs you to talk. Your job is to sit there and watch the show. Right. You laugh, you don't laugh. You want to share notes, do it afterwards. That's that so, line, so that perfect. Tits, yes, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, that finish. That line was my giveaway. And when I said that, I in my mind, some in my in my body, something right. twisted, and I was like, hmm, shouldn't have said that. Right, well, you know what's interesting is because yeah. it, it kind of got a little awkward, and I respected the fact that you sat in the awkward and you didn't give a fuck. Right, but, because I, I earned, the awkwardness is something I'm okay. Like, if I right, earned right. it, right. I'll sit in it. Right. So, but, um, I will say this, um, the tell is I really do care about how big your tits are. Yeah, I, do. <laughs> yeah. I definitely noticed. <laughs> I definitely yeah. noticed. Absolutely. Of course. No. And, and I was just wanted to, I wanted to point that out is because I would have never like, and you know, I don't never have a problem saying mm -hmm. what I, I really don't have the filter. Right. But I also would the point was, the, like you said, the point was, this is a show you shouldn't be talking, whether you got big tits or you don't have big tits. It, it, like, so you're, you're saying that it, you, you're almost saying it's almost like you go, Jesus Christ, you got big tits. <gasps> I got to shake it off and, and, <laughs> <laughs> and do my job. You know, right. Right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, That's what it was. Definitely yeah. part of my thought process happening right then and there. Right. And I and I respected the fact that you because so often people won't buck up and do what they need to do, no matter what, even though it was a tell. And so it's really cool to get to talk to you about it. That's what I was thinking at the time mm -hmm. that I was like, this is dope that he's taken up. But it's also it could be it could have been done more precise. Right. Absolutely. No. In the moment. Um, yeah. I mean, in retrospect, uh -huh. I wouldn't have changed talking to her. Right. Right. But I right, would've... right. She needed to be talked to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was getting it was getting to a point where it was just too much. Right. And right. Uh, but I would have changed the way I went about it. Right. And I right. can admit that. And and so take that to the point where you get a guy and, and you know, you talk about the manipulation of getting a guy to sleep with a girl or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's always that tell. Yeah. There's always like there's no. There's nothing you cannot hide the truth. It's one no. if I, in, in nine years of doing this thing and just my whole life, 55 years of being alive, you cannot hide the truth. Right. Um, it, because it comes out in what you don't say. It comes out in what you do say. It, it, it is. This is a funny thing. And I just and, and, and so let me let me back up. I wanted to say that there are these instinctual drives. And I haven't talked about this in ages, Harry, that on a base level we are 
animals. We're mammals, we're mammalian, Mm. and we're primates and stuff. And so there are certain things that are visceral drives that we, so a woman wants to feel safe. Mm -hmm. She wants to feel protected. She wants to be provided for, and she wants to be led. Um, Hmm. She does not want now that that now lead is a very relative term in terms of, you know, you can crank that up to 10 or you could crank it down to three or whatever. But she wants to know that she can't just push you around and tell you where you're willing to sacrifice your own personal respect for some ass or for the company of a woman. Mm hmm. Now, Dante, you used to say, and I don't know if there's a slight difference, but women want someone who's better. Than oh they yeah, are. they definitely want you better. Yeah. They they also want you better, but I think that's a different thing. She she if she she doesn't want what she already has. She wants more of whatever she wants. She wants to fulfill you to fulfill those cracks that she or the, you want to, you to spackle those cracks. But what's what's interesting is you when you guys have gimmicks and manipulation, the manipulation is always a tell to the fact that you don't think you're worthy in the first place. Right. So I, I call it shoplifting the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you ain't got the money. You're looking right. around and see. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as you get a chance, you slip. And But the thing what guys don't understand is um, uh, there's a there's this old sales, uh, a sales um, terminology called uh, buyer's remorse. Mm-hmm. So like it's like if I sell you a if I Casey I know you on a personal level if I sell you a car and I know the transmission is fucked up right, right. Mm-hmm. um I want you I'm gonna boo-doo-doo, look at this hand look at it, oh don't you know it sounds great look at the interior wow we got a great radio in there but it's a great system in it blah, blah. and then you drive off with it mm-hmm. When you find out the transmission is bad, the first thing you want to know is, did this motherfucker know (laughs) that the transmission was bad? And if you do know that the transmission was bad, then there's an anger that comes over you. There's this bias for uh, you feel cheated. Right. You con me. You con me into. Yeah. So when you present yourself as a particular person, a particular personality, Mm -hmm. and then women all of a sudden find out that you were just faking it or you were manipulating the situation just to get the pussy. Then when the fact that she gives herself to you, she feels she feels as though you cheated her because you you tricked her. Into right. It. Mm-hmm. And 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 at this point where we believe women and what they say and how they the fact that she may be angry at you because you could be a it could be a serious thing. Mm-hmm. Because she's saying you duped me, you mm-hmm. you misled me, you lied to me, and it wasn't that, and it was this, and the, and, it, and 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 who knows, you know, depending on where her head is at, where her morality is, a whole lot of other things, and so when you say you're there's a manipulation, there's really not a manipulation. There's a, there is there's almost a a, a visceral checklist mm-hmm. that that where she she's going through in her head, even on a subconscious level that she goes, oh, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to sleep with this guy. Right. Or if I'm presented with that opportunity, I would sleep with that guy. You know? Yeah, I think there was uh, an instance where I was on the dating apps and me and this girl were talking and we met up and then the I, I was going to suggest to go back to her place. Mm-hmm. But because um, I didn't want to go back because I lived in my mom's house. Mm-hmm. I wasn't going to go back there. Right, right. And she was like, I've had too many guys that become like kind of creepy. <clears throat> so she rather preferred to have gone back to my mom's place uh-huh. and have sex with me. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, and it's weird because now in retrospect, I think about like the checklist she was going through. Right. Right. She right. would rather sleep at a, with a guy who lives at his mom's house than bring this guy back home. You know, what's interesting about that? <laughs> that the fact that you were living with your mom wasn't mm-hmm. even it didn't even discount you from her fucking you know, you understand what I'm saying right. guys guys will hold that in their head oh I I don't I I in, in their head they have a particular frame that they feel that they need to be in mm-hmm. in order to be attractive or to be worthy 
of the attention, the sexual attention, the sexual resources of women, because it's in their head on their own. And a lot of times the woman hasn't even said that, that that's not even a parameter that she's even exposed. You don't think that a woman is uh, less likely to sleep with you if you live at your uh, mom's house? I think a woman, no, because I used to bag chicks up all the time and I was living in the basement of my mom's house. I mean, on technically, a, you're still living at your mom's house now. Yeah, you right. Well, it. well, it is my, yeah, it was the house <laughs> that I grew up in. Uh, but I, no, I, I think what, what there are, it's, you, the one it's you a talk factor. About, it could be a factor, but it's not the only factor. It's There's not other a, things. It's, if if you think it's a factor, it's a factor mm. because <laughs> you give off. Uh, so so I, I always say it like this: that when a woman is assessing you, right? Mm. How how you know from the time that she knows you to the time she fucks you? I mean, even if she's you know she's holding back and it's a month or two, whatever it is, right? Mm. How does she get to know you? You tell her. You right. tell her who you are. You reveal certain things. Even when you think you're not revealing things, you're revealing certain things about who you are. Mm-hmm. So if you have this ultimate insecurity about living which at your mom's house, it will come through. Whereas if you... Now, I'm not saying if she's saying uh, no-brainer, I'm not fucking with a dude who lives... With their mom, with your mom's house, but you're also a stand-up comic. Mm-hmm. You're a guy who pursues, who is pursuing his dream. Right. He's very uh, adamant and honest about pursuing this dream, and you're willing to walk through the fire with gasoline drawers on to get there. Mm-hmm. All of those things are very commendable. You know, when a when a woman is assessing that about you personally, what she's in, in essence saying is. This is a guy who's dedicated and and he's dedicated. And he doesn't care about the hard work and he doesn't mind being rough in it until he, if, if it's something that he's really passionate about. Right. That's what my current girlfriend saw when because right. uh, we I was still living in my mom's house when we met. And she was like she looked up like what I was about and all that stuff. And she was like, oh, this guy really cares about this thing that he wants to do. Right. And it's not like I was like not working. Like I had just hit like a financial rough patch and I was like, I'm going to work my ass off to get an apartment. Right. And then eventually, you know, like it won't, you won't have to like, obviously she wasn't going to, she didn't want to come to my mom's house. That's for right. sure. Right, like, right. Right. No, but, right. but she waited and you know what I mean? And she's been there since, since that point. You know? So here's a crazy thing. I um, I I you know I I I did a little personal management. Uh, es- uh managed a, a few escorts at my time is how I is mm-hmm. how I I uh what I call it at this right. moment. Right. And I remember I was dating somebody, an and- executive of the night, as <laughs> and I um and I talk about it. One of the things I talk about it because first of all. Uh, it's not something I'm proud of, but it's also not something I'm ashamed of. Right. Um, I, I think if you're a human being who wakes up every day with the intention on being better, you can't be more perfect as a human being. There's no way to be more perfect than you can recognize your mistakes with the intention of being better. How? What else could you ask for? Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's. I, there's a lot of things that I've done in the past where I've just done like fucked up shit in relationships. Right. And now I've looked back and I've gone like, well, what am I doing? I know that I'm not yeah. getting back into those same habits right. or right. causing those same problems. So to right. me, it's just like, it's a constant step forward as to what, I, and, th- and this, we're not even talking about major shit, like fucking around or something yeah. like that. I'm talking right. about like minor shit where yeah. I would threaten to leave a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. like minor childish shit where yeah. you try to hold yourself so valuable to a person yeah. and you're just like, I'll leave if you don't straighten up yeah, yeah. or whatever. And it's like, you do that enough times and somebody's going to have the wherewithal to look at you and be like, then just go. Well, I, I, have, I have this thing that I mean, me and Harry talk about this all the time is I make ultimate decisions. Don't mm-hmm. give ultimatums. Right. So right. If, if, if it's so bad that I have to mention that I, I I might I'll leave if I don't ever go. If you don't do this, I will do this. Mm-hmm. I will just do this. Right. 
So right. now, uh, and I'm not, uh, you know, we've talked about it. We said, well, it is, well, well, back up. Cause I, I had a, I had a girl I was dating. I'll tell you who the person was a comic years mm-hmm. ago. And somebody, one of her friends heard an interview that I did. Do you, do you know he was a pimp? Mm-hmm. And so she says, where are you at? I need to talk to you. Right. Mm-hmm. So I come, I come, I, I, I'm like, I'm, I think I was at the stand. She comes by the stand and I go, uh, what's up? And she goes, so you were a pimp? I go, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like how she couldn't figure that out in some capacity. The I rings, think- <laughs> the, the, the jewelry, the car, the coats. You know what I mean? What else did she need? I needed to, she needed, she wanted to see me smack a bitch in order yeah, to make I sure. Mean, like how much more clear does it have to be? <laughs> And and she goes and when she asked me, I think she thought that I was gonna go. Well, you know, I mean, da, 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 da. I go, yeah, yeah, absolutely, almost definitely, go, you go, almost, most definitely. Almost, almost definitely. You answered it like uh, you're at a Senate <laughs> hearing, like yes, I was most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and and Congress was like, uh, you you were, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, yes, I was. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and she goes, well, you know, I don't know how I feel. I go, well, I I don't. I go, well, oh, so what do you want? Do you want to you want you want to end this? Like, right. I'm like, because well, we can end this yesterday. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fine. I go. Mm-hmm. But, but if you're going to I go, I go. Do you realize the goofy shit you coming to talk to me about something that I did when I was 20 years old? And right. I go, you want to hold me? Resp- you uh, you want to you want to hold me responsible for something that I did 20 years old when you know me on a whole nother life? I go, this shit is I go, this is real goofy. Right. I go, I don't even know if I really want to move on now. You, the way you act. And she was like, well, you know, I just felt like I used to talk. I go, okay. So we talked about it. So what do you want? You want to stop? Mm-hmm. No. Oh, okay. All right, so you hungry? So, you want something? You know? So what do you think a woman wants in that situation, Dante? Because like the fact that you're a pimp, like this is, I don't know how I feel about this. Right. Right. So is she trying to get leverage in that situation? Is she trying to break your stones? I mean, what let's, do you, what let's do you think, think about. You know who this was. You know who this was. Gonna be, right, the, the most selfish person. Yeah, I ever okay. I'll tell that. you later, <laughs> Casey. So um, um, and so with her, it was always uh, always trying to get a le- always try because she was so insecure about herself and what she really had to offer that. Mm-hmm. It was always about cutting your legs out from under so that she could always have a, oh, I got this that I'm holding back that I can use to manipulate you. And I'm right. going, like, bitch, you ain't, you will never, I, you must be, if you think I'm going to operate on that, mm-hmm. I'll shoot myself in the, uh, in the head. Like, uh, you, we're not doing that. <laughs> right. So, um, one of the funniest things you ever said to me, and until this day, it's like we were talking in your car and you go, yeah, this girl told me she needs more time. I almost hit this bitch with a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I, I need some I, time. I left your car and I just I walked and I just kept thinking. I was like, hit this bitch with a calendar. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> I you know what I think it was too. She would she no, she wanted to pause the relationship because right. she wasn't sure if mm-hmm. she wanted to continue. And she uh, and I was supposed to put my life on pause while she figured out whether or not I was worthy enough to continue to move the relationship. Forward. And then what the fuck am I supposed to do in the meantime? I'm supposed to sit and wait. Do you know what decide? that's the equivalent? It's funny because we never equate that. That would be like at your job if they go, well, we're thinking about firing you, but uh, we're going to have some meetings. We'll get back to you in a week. Until then, you're suspended without pay. How about even this? Even yeah. better. Listen, I, you know, I don't think you're worthy of me fucking you no more. But let me uh, give me a week or two, mm. figure out what I'm going to do. And let me and I I'll let you know. worth me fucking and see how worth? that plays. Yeah. OK, let, let me let me see what this other bitch you got to say. I guess right. <laughs> yeah, I, I got options. So right. while you trying to figure this out and then when you figure it out, fuck you. Yeah. Because I don't I don't the fact that you're even that you're you're even debating this with a, it's not even a good faith argument. It's like uh, it's like your mechanic telling you they can't fix your car, but they're not going to give it back to you. Either. It, right. Like, oh, you, we're just going to we're going to scrap it for parts. No, the fuck you ain't. So yeah. so um, but it, it was it was uh same same person. I was mm-hmm. um, I was uh, so, you know. Sex was great for a while, and then all of a sudden, I, I couldn't get no head. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Yo, so 
we not you, you know what's up you don't you don't no here's what i said i said listen i think we should just end this mm -hmm. and i and i said uh she's like what what i go well clearly you don't like me because mm -hmm. you're not you're not making an effort to please me Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, we had this conversation about it. no, no. I mean, I think we we get along. Hey, the communication is great. I mean, we do more things. We spend more time. And I go and I go. Well, what, then why is my dick not in your mouth? I don't understand why that. I don't. I don't. It doesn't add up. So she goes. Well, I don't know why you have to be so crass. And I go because. Because I'm 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 trying to be clear. <laughs> you know, I want to be clear about this. So this is and Harry, uh, me and Harry was talking about like we were talking about um uh Jordan Peterson mm -hmm. and we were talking about how he as a person uh he makes these elaborate terms mm -hmm. so that you don't know what the fuck he's talking about, right? right? It's like if you get a lawyer and they're talking to you about legalese, and because you're insecure about the fact that he's a lawyer. You don't really ask what the fuck he means where I go. OK, OK, stop. Mm -hmm. I'm paying you to represent me. You need to tell me what the fuck that means. Right. So like Jordan Peterson, well, you know, in the social construct, there is a hierarchy of incidents and uh, an achievement. And you go, what the fuck does that mean? Here's the thing. Whenever somebody talks in 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 jargon that you they know that you, there's only two reasons why that happens it's either they want to keep you in the dark mm -hmm. so that you feel inferior about what their position is or they are unaware of, of their surroundings where they're talking in a sense and they're unaware that you that you they don't have the empathy to understand that you're in, that their intention is to really communicate with you Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not I, I say this all the time. I don't do awkward. Right. So, so I, I don't know what the fuck. I didn't go to law school. I don't know what the fuck you saying. Either explain to me what the fuck I need to know or we can we can we can end this right now. Mm -hmm. And so um, this 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 idea of not discussing things in good faith. With mm -hmm. the intention is is so that you can be manipulated or so that you can get uh, you a one up so that you can manipulate. Uh, and it all comes from your personal and the other person's personal insecurity. So they're trying to. And, and I was like, OK, so listen, I said, well, I'm not getting no neck. Right. It's I'm not going to go for the rest of my life and not get no. That's that's I'm, I'm going to get some brain. All right. Uh, I don't know if you listen to the podcast uh, normally or know everybody or, that knows or me. Just heard anything I've ever said. <laughs> everything in ever day to day said. life. I don't know or if you, you ever heard me order a sandwich. Or if you see me once, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of know <laughs> somebody's gonna be sucking this dick. Right? Context clues would indicate <laughs> that this dick I'm needs a, to get sucked. I'm about knowledge. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna get this knowledge. And I go. Dante just points to a sign: all dicks must be sucked. <laughs> and the premises. You're like, yeah. I don't play around there's no vagary here <laughs> so i go i go um okay i go okay so i just want to be clear she said well you know i'm not really that good at it and i go well i'm, I'm here to practice right. I'm, I'm, uh, you got <laughs> you you don't have to sign up there's no <laughs> there's no limitation on the on the treadmill you could you could get you get on and run as long as you want you know mm -hmm. and i go okay i i said just, just be clear that this is the last time we're having a conversation Right. Well, I don't understand. I go, you seem to think that this is a negotiation. This is not a negotiation. I, I'm, I'm explaining this is what I want. If I can't have that, we could just or we could just not. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I just some of the, the next time it uh, it slowed down again. I was like, yeah, I'm done. Right. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Because there's no and reason to have another conversation in that. Really? Hmm. Yeah, I guess you're right in that regard because you have your certain needs, and if they're not being fulfilled, then it's and like I'm clear. And I'm also clear about it. Right, right, right. I'm, I'm clear about what my needs are. I want you to be clear about yours because if you're telling me, if you're telling, if some chase says, "Hey, listen, my last boyfriend, I love to strap on and peg him." Well, I'm not the dude for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no judgment, but I'm good. <laughs> you know. So if that's what you think it is, so I mean, it just. Just if you if you lead with honesty and clarity, mm. then there's there's no I don't have to be mad at you. 
Right. Um, the only reason why I'm gonna be why why people get upset is because of their own personal insecurities. They don't know what their value is, and so what they ultimately do is they go, um, "I'm mad at you because you don't think I'm good enough." Mm-hmm. And I'm and I'm going well, and and I'm like, well, if you don't think I'm good enough, I'm I'm good with that. I'm I you don't get to define me. And because you don't get to define me, I define myself. And so just because you, you know, I mean, uh, the pizza parlor don't get mad when you go eat Chinese food. Just, <laughs> right. <laughs> just it's advertise. Just yeah. They just It's it's whatever. So <laughs> um, and then I just left mm-hmm. because it was nothing. Now, I don't say that you can't renegotiate right but at least if she makes the attempt to renegotiate now you're negotiating with an understanding of what your leverage is Mm -hmm. whereas if you do what you were doing if you don't do such and such i'll leave you're negotiating but you don't ever know what your leverage is you're assuming that she's gonna go well i don't want you but but what happens the time when she goes We'll leave. In fact, I packed your things for you now. Yeah, yeah no, I got called out on it. And oh, it was, really? Yeah, yeah. And it was just pretty. I started to realize what a fucking goon I looked like. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's yeah. just that's the thing that I've learned. And even now, in uh, like sometimes me and my girl will argue, mm-hmm. and I'll say like shit that alludes to it, and then I'll stop myself and I'll okay. be like, I'm st- like that. I didn't. That's fucked up of me to say. Where do you think that comes from? Oh, easily from my dad. Okay. Oh, he He used to to threaten to leave all the time. It was his favorite thing. Right, 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 right. And like eventually, the whole family were like, "Hey, man." (laughs) You You just start playing the imaginary violin. The door's locked from the inside, not the out. (laughs) You can walk out. (laughs) <laughs> or it's even worse when your kids they open the door for you. Yeah, yeah. We were <laughs> or, just like, here you go. <laughs> they get your bag. And they go, right. hey, you, uh, do you want all these things packed yeah. up for you? Do you want to take you. your toothbrush? You're gonna get a new one. What, what are we yeah. working with here? So, and you know, it's like eventually he stopped that bullshit too. But I picked up on that as a tactic, and yeah. also like I feel like we replicate um, oh, the yeah. whole life we are used to. Uh, yeah. when we are in a relationship and I used to, and I love it. Chaotic. Right. You know? It was chaotic at home. Exactly. So I'll replicate right. that shit. And, I'll, and now I'll voice out the things that I want to do, but I'm not gonna like, I'll right. tell my girl, I'm very angry right now. I want to throw this cup against the wall. I'm that <laughs> pissed off. And, but I'm not like, but it's, there's no indicator that I'm going to, you know what I mean? It's yeah, expressing yeah. my rage and just being like, I'm so pissed off about what we're discussing. It's making me angry. Well, let me ask you something. What specifically is a thing that would make you angry that way? I'm trying to not think. Not getting enough head. No. <laughs> <I'm getting laughs> enough. That's how crazy about would I- specific instances that would like where I just feel, oh, you, oh, I know what it is. Oh, here we go. Here we go. She'll, um, she'll move my shit around. Mm-hmm. And I don't like it. I don't okay. like when you move my stuff. Okay. And not that I can't find it. It's just piled in the corner right. with the rest of my things. Right. And I don't feel like it's our place when you do that kind of stuff. Okay. So you're, you're, so there's a sub. So, but then this is interesting because we're reading this subtext as well. It's like when I'm, when I teach guys mm-hmm. how to, how they should communicate because I, I think Harry more and more I'm realizing that we're just teaching guys how to communicate properly right right without, That's the and, and, under, and understanding what the subtext of what they're giving away in the process of that mm. um so it's almost like you took my things and you don't care about my things right and so you just pile them in the corner and so it's almost like a, a level of inadequacy because of the fact that you my things is a representation of me and you don't give my things the concern that you give your own things. Yes. Is, is, is that what it, it feels like that? That and it feels like it feels like since you move only my stuff. Right. My stuff. It feels like like her stuff could be scattered. Right. But mine can't be. Yeah, mine has to be in a corner, and it, then it makes me feel like I don't live here. Okay, so here's the thing: is I, I kind of go through that stuff with my wife too sometimes. But what I realize is, 
it's really just her selfishness. Like she really doesn't give a fuck about your things. That doesn't mean she doesn't give a fuck about you. Right. But I equate those things. <laughs> right. And so, yeah. but understanding that you it, it, really, all you have to do is listen. Mm-hmm. I need you to stop moving my things. But, and if you do move my things, I need you to move them with the care and the understanding that you move your own. It's unfair. I, we're both here. We share this. We share the same space. And I and it's disrespectful for you to take my things and pile them in the corner. Right. Uh, because it, it just feels like you're discarding. It's just it's just, it feels like I'm not important and I need you to. And, and I don't care whether you think I am or not, but I don't I don't want to be treated that way. It's disrespectful and I don't want to be treated that way. And mm-hmm. then and then if she does it beyond that, then you got to break up. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? because right. you've ex- you've made your your under the understanding of where you're at i mean this is like the whole blowjob thing it's like i'm clear about what i need and what i want right. and if you don't give a fuck about the fact that i'm clear about it then i'm in a re- i'm in the wrong relationship so i was able to i was never able to communicate what you said uh-huh. to, to her in regards to i feel like you're discarding me or i feel like I would like a little more concern as to what you're doing in terms of my stuff. And this kept happening like every few months. Right. Right. And I just told, and it would just be me telling her, don't move my shit. I don't right. like you touching my stuff and moving it around. Right. That's all it would always be left at. Right. And which like, is, which is also is enough. It's enough it, to say that it, it is enough to say that, but it's like at the same time, there's also that underlying feeling that I have that she doesn't understand about the discard. Let me let me let's be let's be clear about that. Right. On a base level, mm-hmm. if she told you that there was something that you did that she didn't like, yeah, you probably would make an adjustment. Depending. I mean, <laughs> right. Well, okay, depending. But I'm and if she's saying if she's saying I don't like this, right? Then for the most part, if it's reasonable. Mm-hmm. You would go, OK, I, I, all right, I just won't do that, you know, right. mm-hmm. um, because in the in the grand scheme of things, how much how, there's so much that we don't give a fuck about. Sure, absolutely. Um, but we give a fuck about it because it refers to something else that we're thinking about. We we give it this arbitrary value that uh, based on our own insecurity. You there's know, this, there's a story I'm reminded where this guy, <clears throat> he's, he lives with, you know, his his wife wanted a fridge. And she was um, like adamant. She's like, oh, I want the like the Samsung fridge. And he ended up getting like an LG or whatever. Mm, right. And uh, he and she just started crying and he didn't understand what was the, it's a fucking fridge. Right. Right. Who right. Gives a shit. Right. But then discovering it, what <clears throat> realizing that the real underlying issue was that the reason why she wanted the Samsung is because her dad used to sell Samsung fridges. Oh, okay. So it's like by doing that, it felt like a meaningful thing to her. You know what I mean? And like right. that slight discovery. And I think that's a lot of the miscommunication, in my opinion. Sure, I think sure. It's-, it's this arbitrary linking of things right. that you don't even know. Well, it's interesting because, you know, uh, what I realize is, you know, one of my responsibilities of, of, when I decided to have a son mm-hmm. was that I need to fix my shit, right? I, I, whatever those things, because all I'm going to do is pass this shit on. And I, and I relegate my, my son to go through the same things, have the same fears, the insecurities that I had coming up. And so I need to, I, you, you, you know, it, the responsibility is because it doesn't matter what you tell your kids. It's what you show them. They're yes. watching what you do. Mm-hmm. And so this thing that you picked up about this is is you mimicking. So your your father is the epitome of what manhood is, because what other model do you have? Right. And and so when you get guys who they have abusive fathers, they become abusive fathers or abusive uh, husbands or whatever, because they see that. Mm-hmm. And so you mimic it because this is and also what happens is you end up marrying your mother. Because mm. that is the depiction of what you see womanhood as. Mm. And so you so it's like what you're saying. It, it feels like home, even though it's toxic and abusive and all this. It still feels like home. We got. Um, well, can you hang out for a little? Well, we're going to have to. Unfortunately, we can't do a Patreon with Casey. We just ran out of time. OK, so we're not going to be able to. But we're going to have Brett. 
Okay. All right. No. Um, sorry but, about that. But the uh, but the thing is, is is fixing that stuff. Um, fixing that stuff with yourself, and so you give a representation so that you don't, you don't, you don't pass this on to somebody else. It's oh, like that's a major in- concern for me to not pass it on in our in the current relationship. Yeah. And like, forget even like, I mean, kids are you know we don't we don't have kids or anything, but like yeah, yeah. considering children, mm-hmm. that is, we're both so cognizant of not bringing. Literally, we're coming. We want to come in baggage free, yeah, as much yeah. as humanly possible. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. yeah, sure. But be, you'd be, you be surprised how baggage free you get. Like, I really, you know, I, I'm constantly taking into consideration, but also the, the the consideration of what what I'm really thinking and what I'm really feeling. Mm-hmm. Also, is the thing that makes me bulletproof mm-hmm. be- because I'm so. There's nothing you're gonna tell me about myself that I haven't already thought of, that I hadn't already scrutinized, that I haven't already run through a hundred times. Now, it may be a situation where I haven't fixed it yet, but I'm already aware of what my insecurities are and what my, and that is where the true, the true confidence comes from. And that confidence exudes to, to women all the time because right. it's something that, so when you talk about me coming in with a fur coat and whatever, just very, com- no matter how, Hot it is. I'm st- it's because I've I've done this. Yeah. It's, it's nothing somebody's gonna say to me that's gonna rack my eh, fuck you. Um, and to be honest, as a comic, you know, the difference between um I'm I'm Kevin Hart and me is that he got chose. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like we don't really comics don't really get starstruck because mm-hmm. the, the our peers could be the next dude that gets picked and right. and it doesn't even have to be because he's more talented. And mm. so we don't really look at the industry validation in the same way as other people, because our friends are s- superstars that we came in with. You know what I mean? Like right. there's a dude that's on TV that did open mics with you. Yeah. No, so, there's there's several people. Who, <laughs> all right, there's countless people that have done. Open. There are people who I I haven't done an open mic. I watch them do open mics that are now on TV. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And so I think I think, but but understanding what your what your what your what your personal worth is mm-hmm. is the thing that makes you bulletproof. And as you move forward in a real way, it it, it your the confidence comes from a place where you um where you know who you are and you're not allowing anybody to define you. Casey, um, plug all your shit, man, and tell how your people could get you. Buddy, I wish we could talk for another entire hour. We can. Uh, we'll have you back. We'll have right. you back. There's a lot of stuff I wanted to get into. Yeah, because uh, even the term bulletproof is so interesting to me, and I've broken, I've thought a lot about it, and I, I just, parts of it, it's like, you know how you like the word, when I use the word manipulation, you're like, yeah. I don't think that's a word. I think bulletproof is not the right word in some capacities but all right we'll get okay. Okay. next time and if um, not you know you can call me casey you got my number course. you can, i mean I, we chop it up like that and then we'll we, you know we can record it Absolutely. another time all right um everything everything that i do is the same uh social media handle website everything it's all day kca um you could get my podcast it's out every tuesday it's called meet me outside <laughs> nice yeah. nice yeah. okay all right harry talk to me uh, all my stuff is at Harry Turjanian. Uh, follow my YouTube page. That's where all the stand-up clips are at. And uh, yeah, just check that out. But most importantly, follow us over at uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, everything Dante Nero um, or the Dante Nero. I mean, Google me, bitch. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, don't forget the Patreon. Don't forget the one-on-one consultations. You can hit me at DanteNero.com. Click on consult and you can grab some time and we can. I can fix your bullshit. Um, uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolution being podcasted? I love y'all. Thanks for listening. Casey, thank you so much for doing this, bro. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.